I ended up in Texas, as many academics end up places, having two people who are both professors trying to find a place where you can both have jobs. Moving to Texas, I knew what type of situation I was stepping into. I knew that there was many people there, a lot of people, who didn't think climate change was real. But what I've realized now is that I wouldn't be doing the work that I'm doing if I didn't live there. Living in a place where who knows how many. I mean, for the state of Texas, I think it's 70% of people do not think that humans are causing climate change. Where I live in the western half, if I had to guess, it would be maybe more like 90. But living there where your friends, your neighbors, the people you see at church and even at the university, some of them don't think climate change is real, that's what really, um, it, it really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You'll have to edit this part out because I'm at a loss for a word. Missionary is a word. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to use not that word though. <laughs> um, okay, so let me start that again. So living in a place where your friend, your neighbor, the person at church that you're sitting beside or even your colleague down the hall at the university doesn't think climate change is real really challenges you to be clear about what we know is true and why we care about climate change. I imagine you've had some interesting experiences talking to Texan audiences. Could you describe some? <laughs> I've had many interesting experiences. Um, the, one of the first conversations I had when I moved to Texas was with a friendly couple at the church that we went to. They came up and asked me what I did, and I said, oh, I work at the university. And they said, well, what do you study? And I said, I, I study climate change. They said, oh, it's so good that there's people like you telling people the truth because you wouldn't believe the lies that our children are being told in school. So I thought to myself, oh, no, I'm sure they're being told climate change isn't real, and isn't that awful? So I said, well, what lies are they being told? And they said, oh, they're being told that all the Arctic sea ice is disappearing, that the polar bears are endangered. I said, well, that's true. And there was a long silence, and I never saw them again. I never go talk to a group unless I'm invited. So there has to be at least one person who's willing to stand between me and the flying tomatoes at the end of the presentation. Otherwise, I'm not going to go. One of the most challenging talks I gave was in Midland, Texas. Midland is the center of oil production in Texas. It's a very wealthy part of the state. Um, it's a very high level of education because there's a lot of PhD geologists. So I was invited to speak to an association of petroleum geologists in Midland, Texas. The man who invited me tried to warn me without discouraging me. So he really wanted me to come, but he wanted to make sure I knew that most people weren't on board, and I said I thought I knew that. So I got in my car and I drove two hours down to Midland, Texas, and I gave a talk, and I knew what was coming. I knew there were geologists, so I made sure to talk about how geologic change differs from the rapid change that we're seeing today, and I addressed many of the arguments related to uh, Ice Age forcing and CO2 and things like that. But at the end of the talk, the questions are very aggressive, and I think probably my favorite or least favorite, depending on how you look at it, question, was from um, an older gentleman who stood up and said, well, we all know that you're just in it for the money anyways. And I thought to myself, here I am, and this is a point at which I was a very junior in my career, making lower level assistant professor salary, and here is a very senior man who is a petroleum geologist who is easily making six figures, probably more. And so I thought to myself, well, I would really like to see his tax return, <laughs> and I would be happy to compare it with mine to see who was making more money off what they did. And I think the point was underscored by the fact that in driving two hours down and two hours back and spending the time with them, as a thank you, I got a crystal ashtray. <laughs>